Hey, are you looking to play with friends locally? Maybe wanting something a bit more offline? You know, focused on the couch? Well, we're here to give you 10 of our favorite local couch co-op games of all time. Now, there are plenty more out there. These are just our favorites, so we're looking forward to hearing yours in the comments. Also, know that we stuck to more modern games. Older, more retro games we might cover in another video down the line. But hey, anyway, let's get started off with number 10 and talk about the Gears of War series. Uh, you know, the whole thing, maybe notably two and four, depending on your tastes. Really, Gears of War's defining third-person gameplay was really, really good for playing with friends. You know, like I said, I don't need to call out any games local co-op in particular, I'd say two and more recently 4 especially come to mind though, but really Gears of War systems of shooting, cover, and reviving especially really complement playing together, especially with a nice split screen implementation. Uh, Gears has never really been a very vertical game and having chunky beefy characters meant everyone had decent enough screen real estate. And I know that sounds silly, but it made all the difference when you had a very small TV. Just really props to the games in general for making sure to have a well done drop in, drop out co-op campaign every time. Loved it for that. And then once Horde Mode was introduced, hell yeah, man. But next at number nine, let's talk about the Borderlands games, another series, Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, pre-sequel, all of them. Borderlands is probably one of the best co-op shooters out there. Playing Borderlands was basically like the same as chilling in a chat room with some friends, except you were also shooting psychos and collecting really cool guns. I honestly think that's what made Borderlands so cool, the fact that it was a social experience online, and it paved the way for games like Destiny, not just in terms of gameplay, but also just how it acts as like a hangout. Games like Borderlands and Destiny and The Division, where you're kind of just doing the same thing over and over again and grinding, kind of forces you to get into a routine, like to the point where you can and run certain things with your eyes closed. The Borderland games have that same appeal, but why we're talking about them is the added benefit of doing it on the couch. As long as both of you are avid Borderlands players, you can sit down on a couch and play for hours and hours while also being able to just kind of yap and eat chips and talk about whatever. So many games now are about the thrill of the grind, whether you like it or not, but Borderlands was the one to keep that on the couch, and we appreciate that local stuff. Now next at number 8, if we're talking about entire series that lend themselves well to couch co-op online stuff, we gotta mention the LEGO games. I mean, each one, whatever franchise it's based on, brings something new to the table and they're just fun, simple games that have a little something for everyone. LEGO Harry Potter is cool, LEGO Indiana Jones was a good time, the newer DC LEGO stuff is fun and innovating with character creation, the Marvel stuff lets you play as a million bajillion characters, but goddamn, when you mention a LEGO game, you know you're really talking about LEGO Star Wars. The swapping characters on the fly, using your specific abilities to help one another, uh, going around smashing bricks like crazy, or just using blasters and lightsabers to kill each other. The LEGO games are all so fun with friends, maybe even a younger friend if you have one. They have just such a good balance of goofy, jumpy, floaty, lighthearted fun with a little bit of light puzzle and problem solving and a bunch of chaos thrown in. And that's just best experience with someone else dropping in on the couch. Whether it's Spider-Man and Wolverine, Jurassic Park characters, Hermione and Ron, or Anakin and Padme, it was always just a really damn good time. And believe it or not, most of them have actually aged pretty well too. Next up at number 7, we have Resident Evil 5. Now, while it is the game that started to change the series more into that like whole action game thing, less of a survival horror game, it was still a solid entry for a lot of folks. One of the things that made it really cool though, was the fact that the whole game could be played in co-op. The game was built with co-op in mind. Like the scenarios where Chris and Sheva got separated, you can tell the devs had co-op in mind when making this game. I'd go as far as to say that this game is better played through co-op. I've run through the campaign so many so many times because it's just a really good one. You'd think the tension of survival horror anxiety would evaporate in a game that takes place mostly during the day and you're not alone, you got your friend with you, but still, they nailed it. You get overwhelmed, items would be scarce, and it just all worked. If you've never ran through this with a friend, you definitely still should, especially for that over-the-top ridiculous ending. Now next at number six, let's talk about Army of Two. This was a very, very 360 PS3 era game. This 2008 co-op heavy third person shooter let you jump into the boots of two chunky smack talking mercenaries and it was just so, so fun. Salem and Rios are still awesome. The premise was simple, just good old fashioned third person shooting action. Shoot terrorists as two heavily armed dudes with scary masks. The game was actually pretty creative in how you played together. There was a fist bump high five button, you could go back to back and spin around shooting up an entire room, and the aggro system. Uh, the game was heavily focused on one character playing aggressively 
to draw all the heat towards his direction while the other character could get strategic and reposition. It was a really, really fun mechanic, believe it or not, and it let you and a friend really talk through your play experience instead of just blindly, endlessly shooting. A little communication goes a long way, and while it's still a guns blazing game through and through, the creative team up additions here made the game that much better. Also, don't play the third one. That wasn't very good. Now coming in at number five, we have Helldivers. For those that may not know, uh, Helldivers is a top-down twin-stick shooter where you play as cool-looking stormtrooper-looking dudes whose jobs it is to murder bad aliens. I promise, that's the, that's the best way to describe it. What's really interesting though about Helldivers is how the couch co-op works. Yeah, there's your basic couch co-op, like two people sitting on a couch playing on the console, but Helldivers did something that was pretty cool. On PS4, Helldivers was cross-platform with the Vita. Shout out to the Vita, rest in peace. So you could be sitting on the couch playing Helldivers with a friend sitting next to you on their Vita, also playing along with you. And believe it or not, it wasn't gimmicky, it was actually pretty cool. This is really couch co-op taken to another level. Obviously, I'm like kind of half joking. Obviously, you'd probably rather play it on a DualShock 4, but hey, we always like taking time to talk about the Vita, even if it's just for a second, you know? Now we're getting to the really good stuff with number four, let's talk about Overcooked. Overcooked 1 and 2, both are very, very good couch co-op games, party games, and just a great way to break up with a significant other. If you haven't played Overcooked yet, you have to get on it. It's a game where you work together with friends to cook and serve as many meals as you can within the time limit, and it also throws different obstacles in the mix, making it that much harder. Now, they didn't invent this concept. There are other games with this type of approach, but this is just such an effective one. It's one of the best. It requires a lot of teamwork and communication, and it will 100% make you scream at the top of your lungs at whoever you're playing with when they end up burning the fish that you're trying to serve. It's funny that a game with a cutesy art style and cute little characters can get you so freaking angry and can be so intense and challenging. The first Overcooked was actually couch co-op only. They didn't add matchmaking until Overcooked 2. But it's still really cool. We respect that the devs made the first one couch co-op specifically. So if you're a fan of sitting down on the couch and playing games with someone, Overcooked is a absolute must have, dude. Down to number three, let's talk about A Way Out. You know I was gonna talk about A Way Out. Personally, it's one of my favorite couch co-op experiences of all time. Playing this game in person with someone else, I think, is the way this thing was meant to be experienced. Here's the real basic elevator pitch. There are two characters who need to escape from jail, and each of you plays as one of them. Sometimes they're separate, sometimes they interact, and the screen divide will actually change depending on scenes to emphasize certain things each character is doing. Now, the scenarios they put you through to escape jail relies on lots of teamwork, like one person being a lookout as the other goes and tries to cut a hole through the wall behind the toilet in the jail cell, handing little things off to each other, hiding stuff, uh, stuff like that in jail, but then things only get crazier as the game goes on and you get out in the wild with police chases and shootouts. There's one part where one person is the wheel man, the other person is the shooter, uh, trying to row down a rushing river in a rowboat together, just a bunch of scenarios that will have you laughing at the screen and shouting at the person next to you. Every little situation they put you in is definitely designed with fun factor in mind. Now, it can be cringy, it can be goofy, but it tells a simple, charming story, and it's a good time from beginning to end. You and a friend can beat it in like two decent sittings, and you gotta check it out. Now at number two, one of the most underrated features of Portal 2 was its co-op. That mode was damn awesome, and we want to talk about it. It was known as Cooperative Testing Initiative, and you would play as the now iconic robots Atlas and Peabody, the big one and the small one, you know? These were test subject robots built by you know who, and each had their own portal gun with their own little unique portal colors. Now, Portal's puzzle gameplay totally translated awesomely, perfectly to co-op, and I think they really nailed the execution here. The co-op mode is fun and challenging, and every scenario is really totally rewarding once you crack the code. The final course was really freaking fun to pull off, and the nice little surprise ending was really the cherry on top to experience with a friend. That whole ride together with someone is totally worth it. It's not the longest of the co-op campaigns, but it has aged like a fine wine. Now finally, at number one, hey, you know what's better than playing Cuphead and wanting to throw your entire body into the freaking TV? Playing Cuphead and wanting to throw your entire body into the TV with a friend. Real talk though, Cuphead is a pretty difficult game to begin with, so getting some help is definitely nice here. Except somehow with Cuphead, having someone helping you also makes it harder at the same time. I think it's because there's already so much stuff going on screen that adding a second cup boy who's also running around shooting everything just kind of makes the game that much more hectic. Either way, Cuphead makes for a very 
very, very good classic couch co-op game. Uh, the game is legitimately a blast to play. And sharing the beauty of the art, but also the intensity that is Cuphead with someone else is just an all around good time. The complexity of the bosses is what makes Cuphead so much. And figuring out that loop with someone else makes it that much more fun. And now you can play Cuphead in your Tesla, apparently, according to the news. So you can play it and get angry and crash your car into a wall. Those are local offline co-op games that we just straight up love, but we got a couple bonus ones, couple honorable mentions, of course, Battle Block Theater. We think it's one of the better behemoth games and it is absolutely a blast with a friend because it can just get so stupid. And since we already gave some love to Resident Evil, we also want to shout out Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 because that has some really good scenarios. And also, last but not least, Enter the Gungeon because that one's really good. Just play that one. It's fun, it's quirky, it's twin sticks, and it's incredibly challenging. Go for it. Of course, like I said, these are our favorites, so we want to hear some of your picks down in the comments below. We're looking forward to probably making a part two of this video or something like that. There's always more stuff to talk about, but if you enjoyed this and maybe learned about a game or two or a co-op campaign, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. But if you're new, it's worth considering subscribing because we put out videos every single day if you want that. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.